What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in on this highly requested video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the two best ways to bring your projects from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve and then back to Premiere. Now I'm going to be going over a whole lot of information so it's best if you watch the entire thing because there's a bunch of small details that are super important and if you need to you can watch it a couple times or you can change the playback speed in YouTube settings. If you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications and without further ado let's get into today's video. So for this tutorial, I've gone ahead and blown up everything in my display settings so it's a little bit easier to see, especially if you're viewing this on an iPhone. So the first step of either process is to go ahead and make a duplicate timeline, and this one's going to be specifically for sending to Resolve. So we're going to rename this one to Edit to Resolve. We're going to open it, and we want to bring all the video clips down to a single video channel to simplify the timeline. Pro tip, if you hold shift while doing this, it's gonna lock the clips horizontally on the timeline so there's no slippage. Now we essentially have the same timeline, it's just simplified, which is gonna make the XML translation a lot cleaner. Sometimes certain simple transitions will translate okay, but for the most part, if you have any effects in your video timeline, you're gonna to wanna to disable those before you send it to resolve. So with our simplified timeline, the next part's pretty simple. We're gonna to go to file, export, and then hit Final Cut Pro XML. Now it's gonna ask us where to send it and we wanna make a resolve files folder just to keep things organized. Since we're gonna be doing an XML and EDL version, I'm gonna go ahead and make another folder and call this one XML. Now we'll save this here. And we did not have a translation error, which sometimes those do pop up. It's not a big deal all the time. Uh, sometimes it can mean that there's gonna be some bugs in the translation, but that's not always the case. So let's go ahead and jump into Resolve to make sure everything translated properly. So now that we're in Resolve, we're gonna to go to File, Import Timeline, and then Import XML. We'll go to where we just had that file stored. And then we'll locate our timeline, our XML file, open that. And usually all the default settings are gonna work just fine. In this case they are, so we're gonna hit okay. Now that XML file not only tells Resolve how to build out the timeline, but it also tells Resolve where to look for the clips and where those clips are cut. So if done properly, the XML file is gonna bring everything the way you had it in Premiere directly into Resolve. Then we'll watch through and just make sure everything looks good. All the clips look the same. Now there's another step to this process that I'll probably go over in another video and that involves exporting this entire timeline as a video file and then bringing it into Resolve to make sure everything's lined up properly without just guessing. From here, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grade your clips. Now to keep this process quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a film LUT on there and then paste that grade to the following clips. So if at all possible, I highly recommend trying to finish your project in Resolve. So adding titles or transitions, keyframes, whatever that may be. If you can do it in Resolve, it's going to save you from having to do the next part of this process, which can be a little tedious. So if you can finish your entire video in Resolve, all you have to do is go into Deliver, determine your export settings, and then Render. However, we're going to go over how to bring the graded clips back into Resolve the right way. Now, as I was going to the Deliver page, I noticed there was an error here. We have it set to entire timeline, but the transition from the Premiere XML actually threw it off a little bit. So what we're gonna do is delete the transition, bring the clip all the way back out. And again, that's the beauty of having the flexibility of an XML. And then we're just gonna bring the opacity up so we have the same effect. We're just using a keyframe instead of actual transitions. All right, so now let's hop back into the deliver page. The entire timeline is selected now. We're gonna click Premiere XML. Now we wanna make sure the timeline is being sent to the right location. So we're gonna click Resolve Files, XML, open and what this preset is going to do is export a file for Premiere to read which is going to be an XML same as last time but the difference here is that Resolve is also going to render out the graded video clips in whatever codec you select. Most of the time I like to use Apple ProRes 422 HQ but depending on your project you may have other settings that you might want to work with instead of this one. Now I'm going to go into advanced settings and make sure that force sizing and force debayer to highest quality are checked always and then we also want to add at least 30 frame handles and that's going to give us a little more flexibility in Premiere by rendering an extra in this case 30 frame handles on either side of the predetermined in and out points of each clip. So now we can add this to the render queue and then start that render. Now Resolve is going to export all these clips and render them as graded files in ProRes 422HQ as we already determined and send them to the folder we selected. So now we hop back into Premiere in our timelines we're going to go right click import and we're gonna select the XML file that we just exported. However, I forgot to name it to edit from Resolve. So if you do forget to rename it, just check on your timestamp and make sure it lines up with when you actually exported it. Now, you don't have to select the clips. If you select the XML, it's gonna tell Premiere to go ahead and import those clips automatically. So in this case, the XML did import all the graded clips as well as the music file we have in the timeline. So once we have these imported, they're all highlighted. So now let's go ahead and expand this over so we can create a new bin. You can also right click, hit new, and then bin. And then we're gonna name this from Resolve. 
And then we're gonna bring that XML as well as all the raw clips and the music into that folder from Resolve. And then we'll open up this timeline. As we can see here, it has all the raw clips. And if we play that, it's all graded, which means everything rendered out properly. Now the benefit of adding those frame handles we talked about earlier is that now, even though this is our out point of the video clip right here, we rendered an extra 30 frames. So if we wanted to extend that for any reason or you know slip it in the timeline, we have 30 frames on either end of the predetermined in and out points. This is also useful if you wanted to add transitions. So if we wanted to add a cross dissolve, we can add these on the clips and we'll have 30 frames on either side of the cut point to work with. So always be sure to add those frame handles whenever you're exporting back into Premiere. Now, if this would be helpful for you, you can also take the graded clips, right click and then copy and bring them into your edit timeline, Just hit command V and then you can bring them on top of your edit timeline. So you're viewing your graded clips, but you have the organization and the visual landmarks of where you are on the timeline. Now let's take a look at the slightly easier but less flexible method, which involves sending a lossless clean out to Resolve as well as an EDL, which stands for Edit Decision List. And this tells Resolve where all the cuts are made in the timeline. So we're gonna go back to that simplified timeline we talked about, and we're gonna export this in a high quality codec. Again, it's very important using this method that we delete all transitions so that we have a clean image to work with in Resolve, hence the name Clean Out. So now we'll go to File, Export Media. Now, if you're on a Mac, QuickTime is gonna be your go-to, but if you're on a Windows, DNxHR may be a better option for you. And then each of those codecs have their own family of qualities. And in my case, Apple ProRes 422HQ is enough for what I need in this project. As you go through your settings, be sure to check Render at Maximum Depth as well as use Maximum Render Quality. Lastly, make sure you have it named how you want it and that you're sending it where you need to go. We're gonna make a new folder here named EDL to keep the two methods separate. And then we're going to have this name as edit to resolve underscore clean out. Now we can export this. And keep in mind that even though you can export this timeline in a 10 bit or 12 bit video file, it would not actually convert your 8 bit footage to a higher bit depth. So with that in mind, don't waste precious storage by rendering your timeline at an unnecessarily high quality codec when you're not actually going to be gaining any information. And if you want more information on codecs and bit depth, I highly recommend this video by Gerald Undone, which you probably need to watch a few times to catch everything he says. So once that timeline's exported, we also need to export the EDL, which is super quick and easy. We're just gonna go to File, Export, EDL. Be sure to uncheck Include Transitions, and then again, give your EDL a name. It's gonna name it Edit to Resolve underscore EDL. And then we're gonna send it to Resolve Files, EDL, and there we go. Now we're going back into Resolve, and let's just jump into the media page and delete everything we had before. And essentially we're just gonna start over. So we're gonna make two bins now. We're gonna make one named footage and another named timelines. Now first we wanna import the footage. And in this case, we exported the clean out. So we're just importing this one video clip that's super high quality. So we select that, hit open, and then we go into our timelines, right click, timelines, import, and then hit pre-conformed EDL. And from here, we'll see that EDL file, locate it, open it, hit OK, and then it's gonna ask us where to look for the footage that the timeline is gonna be referencing. So we drop down, and if you have a bunch of bins, it can be confusing, but Resolve probably wouldn't have any issue locating it in this simplified project. But just for example's sake, we're gonna deselect timelines so it only looks in the footage folder for the footage to reference. Now we hit OK, and it's gonna make that timeline for us. As we open it up, you'll see it's made the cuts for us exactly where they should be, but it's only using this single clip as a reference. And this just goes to show how important it is, especially when working with an EDL file, to simplify your timeline onto one single video track. Transitions are also not gonna translate very well using this method, so if you're gonna be using transitions that you can't recreate and resolve, I highly recommend using the XML route. Same as last time, we're gonna go into color, and we're just gonna slap a grade on there. We'll use this LUT, and then we'll make sure that all the clips are graded. And now we can go ahead and go into the deliver page. As mentioned before, if you can finalize your project in Resolve, I highly recommend doing it. But if you must bring it back into Premiere, keep in mind that using this method, you're lacking the ability to include true frame handles since Resolve is only accessing the rendered file and can't read the footage beyond where the cuts are made in Premiere. That being said, the rest of the process is just the same. We can delete the frame handles, add to render queue, and then it's gonna do the same thing it did last time, render out all of our graded clips along with an XML file for Premiere to read. Or if we wanna just export a ProRes or H.264 master, we can do that here as well. Okay, so that was a lot of information. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to like this video and send it to all your editing friends. And lastly, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm posting tons of behind the scenes content, lots of tutorial updates. I'm where I get all of the feedback for what you guys want to see next, as well as the comment section. So be sure to drop those comments below. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.